This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Dwayne Tames joining you once again with Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to catch up with Ernie Shea with the 25 by 25 program, but also a, a bigger picture maybe as far as renewables and, and looking at uh, providing energy resources uh, from across the country from a wide variety of sources, I understand. Well, that's right, uh, Dwayne. The 25 by 25 Alliance is a farmer-led 10-year-old uh, alliance has been working to talk about energy solutions from agricultural landscapes. And when we think about solutions from agriculture around energy, we don't think just about biofuels. They're a critical component, a critical way we contribute, but so too is wind, solar, geothermal, low-flow hydro. There are many ways that the agricultural landscapes can contribute energy solutions. And with the current administration's continuing concern about national security, about economic development, about jobs. We think we're well positioned to continue to demonstrate that the heartland, rural America, is where we can look for answers and solutions. We think about that, uh, not only is it uh, production of, but the usage by the average consumer that, that will make this system flow and work. That's right, and I think uh, consumer choice is an important driver of future uh, investment decisions, future production decisions. We've been benefiting from government policies that have kind of driven a new way forward, but uh, the future of those is uh, going to be debated over the next couple of years, but what won't be debated would be the consumer's demand for cleaner products, efficient products, uh, energy sources that are produced here at home, and that's what we've begun to focus on in this first 10 years of 25 by 25. But as we've had these energy conversations, we've come to appreciate the fact that farms, forests, and ranches produce more than just food, feed, fiber, and energy. We've come to better appreciate the fact that we filter water, we create biodiversity, we create uh, landscapes that provide viewscape for people that are interested in those types of outcomes and benefits. We provide, even in this era of, of difficult conversation about climate change, climate change solutions because when we farm sustainably, when we use cover crops and no-till, we're sequestering a tremendous amount of carbon. So out of that has come a recognition that we need to broaden the 25 by 25 conversation into a wider conversation of the multiple solutions that farmers deliver from the land. And that has us had us morph to become the solutions from the land not-for-profit entity that is a place where farmer leaders are talking about the multiple solutions they deliver and going on the offensive with the conversation of how managing farms in a sustainable way is something that provides multiple public benefits. We are tired of having to defend ourselves and react to individual problems, whether it's water quality or endangered species or you name the problem that has been directed back at agriculture. So this is an effort to go on the offensive, talking about landscape scale solutions that meet public needs and priorities. And we think about those uh, system-wide approaches that, that we use in agriculture. A healthy environment is a healthy environment, whether that's for growing the crops and livestock that we typically think of, or the urban areas uh, and the landscapes that they can enjoy on the outskirts of town as well. That's right. And these, you know, for many economists, they would call them externalities. You know, we call them co-benefits. But the farm community has been, over the decades, uh, put in a position of having to defend what they're doing rather than promoting these multiple benefits. So we now have a platform where farmer leaders are standing up and saying, wait a minute, my farming operation feeds you, clothes you, produces fiber, filters water, sequesters carbon, creates habitat for biodiversity. It's time to be valued, recognized, and at some point compensated for these wider range of goods and services that we deliver. Uh, our leaders feel that we have been underappreciated, undervalued for decades. And this is a chance to change the conversation. If we are at the point where we're gonna revisit how we go about incentivizing producers to farm sustainably, why not create market incentives in the form of ecosystem service payments that reward farmers 
uh, for this wider range of contributions that they make for the public benefit. So that's what we're about in Solutions from the Land. There's a, a clean energy pod, there is a climate smart agriculture pod, there is a, uh, a strong recognition that we need to use a different business model to operate. And our business model is one where we are less government centric and more multi-stakeholder collaborative in terms of how we operate. We are thinking at a different scale instead of just hotspot to hotspot. We're looking at how we can operate in larger landscapes, so much bigger than what we've thought about in the past. Um, we have recognized that this, this whole payment mechanism, as I mentioned earlier, is a critical key to a new way forward, and we're exploring how markets can be structured to reward the producers that are delivering in these areas that people have just taken for granted. So it's an exciting new platform, and uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have a tremendous group of agricultural leaders across the country that have stepped up and said they want to be a part of it. Our thanks to Ernie Shea joining us uh, with the 25 by 25 Coalition and Solutions from the Heartland. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did.